the three of us have been together at a convention uh, before. We've been to screenings, yeah, yes. revival screenings. You're, you're the virgin crowd. And yeah. Yeah.
never do anything that's really correct. It's just never. Or real. Or, yeah. Well, she, I seated her in a chair and I, and I got on my knee behind her, so my, I think my face was right behind her head. And the reason I was cast is the expression on her face <laughs> as I talked to her, because I was so creepy. <laughs> so, so she got me the part. And, uh, and, and then she went on the cast. I think she had already cast me in a taxi episode or something. She cast this, this sitcom and also a werewolf. So it shows I went from doing the sitcom to, you know, I, I guess she believed in my range. Broadway play sitcom for Star Trek. Good reference. The Howling is considered to be one of, if not the greatest, werewolf movies ever. I was living back in Hawaii when he called and said, the werewolf's done, come back, right? And 
shots. I'd already shot my close-ups. And I said, you want me to match shots I did three months ago? He said, yes. Ah, you know. So I flew in and I said to the hair lady, Gigi, I said, my hair is grown, you probably should trim it. She said, no, I have Polaroids, it looks just the same. And I said, no, you really need to trim it. If you watch that scene with me getting killed, where the gurney comes at me, and if you slow it down in slow motion, you can see my hair go like this. <laughs> so before I throw it out to the audience, I hope you guys will indulge me. I want to ask you guys a couple of individual questions. For you two, I, you are both a part of one of my favorites, Gremlins too. Joe, 
check this out. And we did that little ad lib that we did out in the attics there in front of the church. And he's like, oh, God, bring the cameras out here. Let's shoot it. <laughs> and that's the way it was on set with him. You know, he was so open to our creative energy. And I think those are the things that make magic in the film. Yep, absolutely. Those are the best directors. Yeah. And for T, I am, um, I have been a fan and admirer of yours for a very long time. So it was literally, and, and all the lines are basically made up. 
And I remember the producer, Mike Finnell, off camera. Mike Finnell is not the funniest guy in the world, right? <laughs> so, Joe, we're, we're, we're doing the scene where I'm pretending to, uh, Martin Short is pretending to be the cowboy. He's, he's, you know, it's supposed to be my face on Martin Short. And, um, and, and one of the characters says, Cowboy, what did you do to your hair? And I say, I had it done, Clint Eastwood style. <laughs> you, you see how all of those events on the flick. So I say to that line, and Mike Vanilla, I can hear a lot of time about, is that funny? Do you think that's funny? Very far from being from Kansas. 
that I'm going, well, I'm not going to be naked in there in my toe. And he said, I don't care what you put on, as long as it looks like you're naked. <laughs> you know, from here up. So, Slim, we got rid of the issue, and Slim comes over and goes, Looking pretty good there, kid. I said, thank you. I really have clothes on underneath this. And he said, that's all right. I'll use my pants. <laughs> but he and Chris would sit around the fire for hours listening to stories of when, you know, the olden days. All these guys would sit around. I was in bed asleep and Chris would just listen to their stories and they had, were you ever there during that? Oh my God. Chris is lying when he's a heavy metal boy. It's just one of my favorite lines in the hallway. You know, when he's a that boy, what do I say? I'm a boy. Yeah. And then something, oh my God, that's gay on that. It was so funny. Yeah. Yeah, he was. He was a great guy. He was a great guy, a great husband. Um, I, I never met anyone in the movie. Um, I worked about three days on the Howling. I think two of the three days were close. I, oh, I'm sorry. I met, uh, other than the two ladies on stage, I met Linda and I met Dee. I never met Patrick McNee. I never met John Kerry. I never met Slim Pickens. All of them wonderful people that I admire. Never went to uh, Point Lobos where you shot. I, I was always just in a little tiny crappy set, mostly by myself. Even when Dee is reacting to my transformation, as she said, she shot my reaction shots three months before we shot the transformation. So um, we did have we had, we had a porno booth scene together. In that, they recently re-released the Howling on Blu-ray. If you'll notice, what I'm saying to her, the porno booth doesn't match my lips at all. In the original film, it was so dark you couldn't see my mouth moving. So Joe decided that it wasn't scary enough, so that the speech that I say in the movie was done entirely in, on the looping stage, the same day that I made up, I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. So the new speech does not match my lips, which you couldn't tell that until the re-release. So, so uh, yeah, it makes me look like a, it, it makes it look like a bad European <laughs> film. Every minute on the set, if it's a low budget movie, every minute costs 
$68. If it's a big budget movie, every minute costs $20,000 or whatever. But you never felt that pressure from him. He still was that same spirit of, you know, we're, we're just going to have fun. I want to hear your idea. If you have an idea, when I, in the inner space, when I had the scene of the cowboy dressing up to go to town, he goes, okay. Where are you looking at the camera? <laughs> what are you looking at? And I had brought in a bag full of cowboy boots and I said, I'd like to be the male version of I'm, uh, I'm just a girl who can't say no. From the world of Susie Wong, right? And where she's dressing to go on out that night putting her stockings on. I'm going to do the macho male version of that. He goes, okay. And he went to and I brought the boots, and he just, he no one does that. No one does that. Rob Zombie. Rob Zombie. He comes in, he, he knows what he wants, and then bring in your best shit. That's what he did. <laughs> in in uh, Halloween, you know, the whole thing with oh, the bagels between Scout and I. All improv. All of it. So, yeah.
when we were the trash men in the burrs, it was during the lighter strike. So there was no scene there. There was really very little scene we had. And at the time, Shirley McLean had a book out about, you know, well, sort of, yeah. About what I did. About what I did. So I, I said to Joe, I'm not in the writer's guild. I'm going to write this scene. So we have something to do. And the way to do that is always give the other actor the better lines. So I gave Joe, uh, I gave Dick all the funny lines, and I was simply a lazy guy who I would rather talk than work, right? And Dick was the guy doing all the work, but he's too nice a guy to really yell at me. And it was it was sweet to to get to because I knew Dick at that point now to write something that I knew he would shine in and be funny, and also we could both find Charlie McLean's book. I'm sorry about it, so it was uh, it was some of the things. It was worth that. <laughs> I never, I never <laughs> made a change This was, uh, but the laying on of hands and the healing power of crystals and all that stuff all found its way in the dialogue between two trash men. <laughs> <laughs> there's, the, there's the cell line. <laughs> oh, come on, you guys. You're going to get out of here. Go why the hell did they ask that question? Yeah, I got how, how was um, Rob Zombie as a director? Oh my and God, I the best director. I love him, I love Sherry. She brings him his health food drink and his vitamins every morning. <laughs> so cute. But you know when I did it, he sent me three from hell. And I wrote back and I said, oh my God, I'm going to do this part. But I have to look really shitty. I don't want any makeup and I'm going to dye my hair brown. And can I have four room glasses and be, oh, be, 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 and she writes <laughs> back and says, okay. <laughs> was, and Lords of Salem, you know, I'm sitting in my room and he's going, oh my God, I can't, I can't, you know, I've been playing a part the whole first half of this film. This is who I really am now and I run across on the set I, I can't be this blonde, cutely doll anymore. I've got to be harder. I've got to have a different look. And he looks at me, and he looks at his wife. He says, you got 15 minutes. <laughs> you know, that's what I mean. They, they have so much in common about trusting the talent. You know, not that they wouldn't say, that's a stupid idea, and if, if they didn't feel like it, but they give you so much room to bring your gifts to life. And that's really for me when the magic happens. So, speaking of Lord of Yeah. Yes, speaking of Lord of Salem, you mentioned how we will let you improv and such. Were there any like really good improvs that happened in the Lord's? Oh, so many. Like when I hit Bruce over the head with the frying pan. Oh. Totally improv. So many, so much. I mean, it, every scene just, we get the basics and then everybody takes off. That's the <laughs> thing. I love you, lady, so much. You drink. I love you all so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All I had to do was see your three names and I can Well, you know, and there are two really brilliant English actresses who work absolutely the opposite way that I work. So they know everything, they break everything down, and it works for them. I come from the work of method. I, will, I don't do any work except learn the lines and wait for the character to tell me what to do. So the first scene, Patricia looks at me and she says, are you going to play it like that? <laughs> and I went, yeah. <laughs> and she went, oh, are you? <laughs> and then we were great friends. But I, when that first came out, I thought, oh man, it's going to be a long fucking chip again. <laughs> <laughs> so, wondering, um, do you have memories from the actual premiere of The Howling? What do you remember about that? Gosh, did we go to New York? No. Uh, no. <laughs> Doc jumps in the window when I'm in Penny Chris's apartment. And of course, 
God isn't there when I'm shooting the scene, right? And so we're at the screening, you know, and, and it's like a roller coaster, that screening. I mean, they're laughing, they're screaming, they're thinking of it. I thought Joe yeah. was like a conductor, you know. And all of a sudden, here comes the dog. I was the only one in the whole screening that screamed, okay? I mean, it scared me. I just screamed. And I, a few seconds later, I could hear Joe all the way down in front laughing his ass off that I was the one that screamed. I thought it was so scary. Okay, we did absolutely go to New York. No, I never did. Well, we did. Oh and <laughs> Chris and I, and because it was in Studio 54, we had a party afterwards. But we're in the screening. My whole family came, even my grandma. <laughs> and we're sitting watching it. And we get to the scene where Chris is having the love scene with the sheeple. It's dead quiet. <laughs> and my grandmother says, Christopher Stone, shame on you!
And, and he said, well, what do you mean? And I said, look, I walked into my bedroom and found my father who had tried to commit suicide in my bed. You know what happens? Nothing. Because your brain goes, not, I'm not seeing this. Wait, what is, what is this? Something's wrong. And I quietly walked into the living room and said, Mom, I think Daddy's trying to hurt himself in my bed. Cut to two hours later after the paramedics had come. And they say, he's going to be okay. But lost it then. I said, it's the moment when I know he's okay that you lose it. If I lose it before, I've done all the work for the audience before the moment it happens. So they let me do it my way and thanked me, thanked me, thanked me. Thank me. So that's what I learned before I was anybody, I can't do something that's not true. <laughs> uh, I would agree that that's the most important thing. I agree with D that uh, if you get a if you get a direction, uh, and I learned my lesson in uh, I guess a funnier way. I was in some cheesy television movie, uh, and I was prosecuting. Or I was uh, I was on the uh, I, I had um, Chris Sarandon on the stand, and I and the director was a guy named Marty Davidson who had a terrible Brooklyn accent. And I guess because I was the lone man on the set, he had Virginia Madison and all these people that were more famous than me. He was I was the guy who got picked on. And this is the direction he gave me. All right, here's what I want you to do. You gotta understand. I want you to just never, just never like that. And I was like, you know, before the camera rolled, I was like, oh, I'm gonna nail him.